Now these two terms are going to be pretty important for people who are heading in a more biochemical direction. Isoionic and isoelectric. These end up popping up quite a bit when we're talking about solutions and they end up uh, being important when we're talking about electrophoresis, so things like doing gels. Now let's go with a nice starting molecule, alanine. We know that alanine is going to have its carboxylic acid end and we know it's going to have its amino end. Now when we think about that, we know that in pH 7 water, we're going to have this proton off, and we're going to have a proton stuck on over here. That's called as Witter ion. Z W I T T E R I O N. Kind of a weird one to see or to write because we don't see the Z W uh, moiety in our words too often, but Zwitter ion. Now that is going to be a neutral molecule overall. It does have two ionic groups on it, and they stay there. There's no way we can draw a resonance structure that gets rid of those, but they are going to have charges, though no overall charge for this molecule. Now you can picture that carboxylic acid at very, very low pHs, you know, down by like pH 1, we're going to be able to slap an extra proton on there, and we're going to end up having our NH3 our carbon, our CH3 up here, and we're going to have our carboxylic acid currently proton on. So that's at very low pH. At high pH, in other words, really basic solutions, we're going to be tearing off this proton. That's going to be start 50-50 uh, mix once we get to a pH of 9.9. So, when that happens, we end up having an H2. We end up having our carbon, CH3, C double O double and that'll be negative. So notice this will be our anion form. And up here, I missed writing my proton uh, and showing that it was a positive charge state. All right, so now we've got all that fixed. We see our high pH case and our low pH case. So we can see right away we were working with our intermediate form. Now, if we were trying to actually refer to our isoionic solution, and when you throw the intermediate form in a solution, you get the isoionic solution. Now, hopefully we have that one pretty well burned in our minds. We should know what the isoionic points equation should be because that's going to be our calculation for the intermediate form. We said it's going to be concentration of H plus equals square root. And remember, we have our K1, our K2. We have our formal concentration if we're making that assumption that we talked about before, and we usually are. We're going to have our K1 times our KW, and then on the bottom we're going to have our K1 plus formal concentration. And if we're going for a very, very, very quick gut check, we can even say that pH will be roughly the average of pKa1 and pKa2. And actually, if we were to plug it in and do all the calculation, and it actually shows that calculation being done in our textbook for a 0.1 molar solution, we end up getting a pH of 6.11. And it turns out that if we just plug it in here, we get the exact same number with our quick gut check. But that's mostly a function of the fact that our book used 0.1 molar alanine solution. Different concentrations will give different results. So I did want to highlight that as being slightly different than what the book said. So this will be our isoionic case for alanine. Isoionic, we end up at 6.11 for our pH. Now, isoelectric, for that we're going to be making a different assumption, or at least have a different goal in mind. For the isoelectric point, we want to end up having 
a totally even concentration of our pluses and our minuses in solution. Now up here, it might have seemed like we should have an equal concentration of these two, but we actually won't. And if we go through the math to calculate it all, and they do mention uh, the calculation in the text, they'll tell us that the H2A form, well, H2A plus form, right over here, ends up being 1.68 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. When we started with a formal concentration originally at 0 0.10 molar, notice that we haven't removed very much of that, so our formal concentration hasn't changed much, which was one of our conditions that we said. And then for this form, we're going to have 1.76 times 10 to the negative 5 molar. So you can see that they're close, but they're not the same. We shouldn't expect these two to have the same concentrations when we actually handle this as our simultaneous equations. Now, with our isoelectronic point, we're actually going to force the issue, and we're going to work it until we actually do get them to be equal. And believe it or not, it works out that the simplified case for that, if you go through all the math for it, will be that pH equals one-half of pKa1 and pKa2. In other words, our rigorous way of doing it, or at least our fairly rigorous way, is our isoionic point. Our shortcut way is our isoelectric point. They aren't necessarily the same, but they are generally going to be pretty close. At the isoelectronic point, we'll have the same number of positives as negatives in our solution, meaning overall the solution will be neutral. At the isoionic point, all that we're saying is that we threw our neutral chunk in, it dissolved, dissociated, and did what it wanted to do, and got to its own equilibrium. Equilibrium? Non-equilibrium. Uh, at least not innate equilibrium. Now, the thing is, if we were to put an electrode on both sides, notice that what, it's going, what the molecule is going to do is it's going to migrate back and forth. So let me just go ahead and do this real quick. I'll just make a positive and a negative electrode right here. Suppose that we're over here toward the negative side of our, of our gel. What's going to end up happening, happening on that basic side of the gel with all that extra OH- around it? We're going to be tearing off our protons. So we're going to be giving ourselves the negative form only. That's going to be repelled from the negative side, and it's going to start going this direction. If we had the opposite case, if we had our really acidic form, all those extra pluses are going to holding the proton on, and it's going to start repelling away from that until eventually it's going to find some middle ground where the pH isn't so nasty, and it's going to manage to get itself totally neutral. And in that neutral spot in the middle, it's going to get focused in very tightly. So we're going to end up having this little region of space where all of our molecules are going to be focused because they're no longer being pushed away by either of the two electrodes. Or you could think of them as being pushed evenly by the two electrodes. That's how we do isoelectronic focusing. We throw a protein in there. The protein is going to have its built-in Ka's, or the amino acid is going to have its built-in pKa's. And by looking at the average of those pKa's, it's going to find a middle ground where it's happy using this sort of an equation. That's a great way to do focusing of Zwitter ions. And it's a commonly used trick that you'll see in the biological sciences.